Welcome to your labor and delivery rotation. Your two weeks here will be extremely fun, but incredibly fast paced. As long as you're in on the action though, you'll be learning. So I want to show you around so you can better situate yourself for learning opportunities. On the first day of your rotation, be sure to get to the hospital in time to get a set of scrubs from the auto valet on the third floor by the operating rooms. Then bring them up here and you can change in the locker room. I'll show you where that is later. After you're done changing, bring your stuff in here, the sign out room. Over that corner is a pretty good place to put your stuff. Everything in here is safe. It's only residents and students allowed back here. Sign out starts at 7.30 in the morning. The evening time varies, so ask your chief about that. But when it's time for sign out, make sure that you're prompt. That usually starts pretty much on time. Sign out happens around this table. The attending usually sits up here, the fellow here, the chief resident there, and on down the line. Students tend to sit over there. On the first day, you won't have been expected to round on anybody. So grab yourself a sign out, pull out your pen, and just pay attention and jot down notes. From the days going forward, you'll be expected to round and present. After sign out, we run the list and we come up with our tasks for the day. Some of those tasks happen in the triage rooms, so we'll go there now. Welcome to the Early Labor Lounge, or the L for short. It's where every obstetric patient comes to be evaluated. Our wonderful nurses will check them in and let us know when someone's ready to be evaluated. In Epic, they're in rooms 446 A through E. Watch these rooms throughout the day, and if you see a university patient show up, definitely be involved in their care. When you take a history, don't forget your system of collecting information, and be sure to ask the four cardinal questions of obstetrics. Are you having any contractions? Do you have any vaginal bleeding? any leakage of fluids, and how is your baby moving. Make sure that you confirm any medical history, surgical history, their obstetric history including C-sections, medications, and allergies. After you get the history, gather your thoughts and go ahead and present to your resident. And even come up with a differential diagnosis. It's good practice and it shows us that you're thinking. If you think someone needs to be evaluated for breaking their water, go ahead and get our cart set up. In the closet over there, you'll find a speculum, and the cart's over here. Go ahead and place a chucks pad on it, pull out a nitrazine swab, and put a slide down, and be sure to circle it so we can find it again. <laughs> Many patients in the L get ultrasounds. This one, the SAOTE, is newer and can be unplugged and moved whenever you like. The older one needs to be fully powered down before you unplug it, otherwise the hard drive will crash. Try and have the ultrasound in the room before your resident comes to evaluate. It can help facilitate the evaluation and maybe you'll get to do the ultrasound. And please be careful with the ultrasound probes. They're extremely expensive and very fragile. If a patient gets admitted to the labor floor, they head down to the main rooms. The resident will take care of the orders, but you can help by making a sign out. This is the front desk of our labor floor with our charge nurse and our BA. Through there are the locker rooms where you can use the bathroom. From the charge nurse, you can get a copy of our labor floor. The nurse keeps track of every patient who's in labor, their G's and P's, their cervical exam, and any meds that they're on. You get a copy for yourself. Each room has the patient's name, their gestational age, their G's and P's, and any kind of meds that they're on. If you see that a patient is either high risk or women's center, make sure you're involved in their care. They're one of the university patients. This is the main charting room where the interns, the private attendings, and the midwives all work. It's close to the labor room, so you can see all the tracings, and there's plenty of computers. If you can't find your intern elsewhere on the floor, try, try checking in here. Throughout the day, the interns will be checking on all the laboring patients, both private and clinic. Make sure you meet as many patients as possible so that you can be involved in their care. 
These patients also need notes every two hours. Try and write the notes on the patients that you're following. They follow a soap note template. This is one of our laboring rooms. A woman could be in the rocking chair, in the bed, on the balance ball, walking around or coping pretty much in any way she can imagine. When it comes time for a delivery, we bring in the delivery cart. In it, you'll find gowns and gloves. Make sure you pull a set for yourself as well as a mask and get yourself ready for the delivery. You don't want to miss it. Sometimes, for many different reasons, a woman will have a cesarean birth instead of a vaginal delivery. If that's the case, come over here, grab a hairnet, put it on, and head through these doors. Over here you'll find your masks and your ortho booties or shoe covers. That should help keep you dry. Go ahead and grab your mask and your boots and head into the OR. If there was a case happening, you'd have to leave your mask on. But for right now, we can talk without it. When you do come into a room that's set up for a case, watch out for anything blue. That's all sterile. The scrub tech also puts her gown and gloves on a white sheet. That's also sterile, so try not to touch that. When you come in, head over to the cabinets on the wall and go ahead and grab yourself a gown and some gloves. Then if you can, hand them sterilely to the scrub tech. If you don't know how to do that, that's okay. Just ask your resident. And from here on out, your resident should direct you. Sometimes it's appropriate for you to place the Foley catheter or to help put on the Venodyne boots. Just go ahead and ask. And remember, in a C-section, the patient is awake. So just be prudent about what questions that you ask. At the beginning of the week, touch base with your chief resident. They're in charge of the service and may have their own expectations for you. And of course, if anything is unclear, please ask. We want you to succeed as part of the team. Good luck!